Hey everybody, this is Ben Baki again. I haven't talked to you for a while on uh, video. Uh, and I am here in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Uh, it is Saturday afternoon, about 4 o'clock, uh, the 24th. The Indy 500 is tomorrow. My dad and I are excited about that. My dad is currently behind the camera videotaping. Say hi, Dad. Hey, hey. Uh, but yeah, a lot has happened since uh, last time I talked to you, and there's some. I actually wanted to kind of talk to you about what's going to be happening in the future, because I think it's easier to describe on video than it is on to type it all out. Uh, and if you're anything like me, I'd rather watch a video than read a, a book about a uh, bone marrow transplant. So it's actually kind of like an organ transplant that I'm going to be going through. But um, I'll back you up just a little bit to Thursday. Um, I had my appointment with the bone marrow transplant team um, and uh, it, it was really comforting and I, I put that out on Facebook in the post that to pray for me that everything would go well um, just because it was you know kind of scary to, um, to, to hear some things percentages and whatnot and, and we did hear some of those and actually the percentages rose um, because I'm young and uh, because I think my sister's a perfect match um, but even then, they told us that they have had perfect, ma they've had siblings who have matched up perfectly, and still um, people have struggled um, to get through the bone marrow transplant. And so, because the, the bone marrow transplant's a really awesome thing, my one of my oncologists, Dr. O, told me that it's like the golden card to play, like the trump card that you can play with your with a situation like leukemia, um, but there's risks involved. And so they actually told me that there's a 10 to 15 percent chance I'm on the lowest place, and so maybe I'm a little bit lower than that even yet. So I want to talk to, to uh, my Dr. Silverman is uh, a woman. She uh, speaks Portuguese. I think she's from uh, Portugal or Brazil. Um, really nice, really nice, awesome woman who is very smart, but also breathes a, breathes a lot of hope into the situation, and that's that's really what my whole family needs, and and I need, and so. Um, on Thursday, uh, the appointment we were there with, uh, my dad was there, my mom was there, my sister. Um, my sister is going to be the donor to me of the stem cells. Um, and so, um, I also had a bone marrow biopsy done, which is where they take a piece of bone out of my uh, hip. And, uh, it's, it's, it's no big deal anymore. Uh, the pain, it's, it's not painful or anything. They, uh, they put, they inject me with lidocaine and everything and actually get Versed and morphine, which Versed is kind of like a loopy medication. But I, I still remember things. I think I'm, I'm a beastly man who can tolerate most things. And, uh, but, uh, so the appointment went great. Um, and so the biopsy, the results should come back on Wednesday. And everybody I talked to said that it should be clean um, as far as showing any cancer or anything like that. Um, and so if everything is great with that, there's one other thing I have to, you know, as, as I've mentioned to you, my, my bottom has had some pain. And so Dr. Silverman wants to make sure that all that pain is gone before they take me to transplant. And so if, if everything is good with my biopsy, my, my bone marrow biopsy showing no cancer cells, um, on Wednesday, and then also, um, my bottom is healed, then on Friday, um, my little nephew Noah's trying to come in, so maybe you'll see him. Uh, so if everything goes great, then next Friday, you know, we're making a video, buddy. Can you be quiet? Um, if everything goes great, then next Friday, I will be admitted. Are you going inside? Next Friday, I will be admitted to the hospital. So it'll be in the morning, probably about... Um, uh, they said they had to make sure there's a bed and so next Friday I will start chemotherapy for six days and it's a very hard chemotherapy and so the goal um, it's called an allogenic bone marrow transplant and so that means that they completely wipe out my bone marrow um, to the point where there is none left as much as they can <coughs> excuse me um, and so it'll be empty. They try to empty my bone marrow of all my cells because that's where the leukemia is. Leukemia is a cancer of the white blood cells. And so, you know, your bone marrow makes platelets, red blood cells, and white blood cells, basically. 
Um, and so it'll wipe that out. And then day seven, June 5th is, 5th or 6th, 5th, is the day that I will get my sister's stem cells um, injected into me. So there's actually no bone that they take out of her and put into me. That's how they used to do it. But now the technology has advanced. And so they just hook her up and they take her um, blood out. And actually they'll give her, um, it's called Neupogen. It's a stimulant for her white blood cell, uh, for her for her bone marrow to push out into the peripheral blood um, all um, all of the stem cells that are in her. And so once that's all pushed out, then it's in her blood floating around and so that when they take it, they have a lot more stem cells than just if they just took it now. Because you have know, some floating around, but, and so, so they'll take those out of her and then the next day, I think they might run it through something and then the next day it will be injected into me and then that begins the process. And so there will be a hundred days, 20 days up on the floor. And so I will be in the hospital for 28 days as an inpatient, just on that floor, on the seventh floor bone marrow transplant in Iowa City. And so I, can, I cannot leave that wing. I can't even walk around the hospital because of risk of infection and whatnot. And so after 28 days, I come home. And then there's a risk. Uh, so the biggest risk is called the graft versus host disease. And that means that my body will recognize my sister's stem cells as foreign to me. And they actually want that to happen because then your body is recognizing it, that it's actually in you. Just like any organ, and then there's, you know, any organ transplant, they give you anti-rejection medicine. Well, they're actually going to give me anti-immune, it's an immune suppressant medicine. Uh, because they don't want my immune system to start fighting my sister's immune system, basically. It's, it's really kind of a crazy process. And so I'll be home for 80 days, and that's when that graft versus host disease thing will happen. And the biggest, the main things that they told me can happen is skin. You can have blisters or kind of rashes. And they have steroids and medicine, steroids particularly um, that they give for that. Um, you can also have um, liver troubles. Some people have lung troubles. Um, and then fatigue, obviously, just like with chemotherapy, it's going to be a hard chemo that I get. Um, and so that'll happen. Then I'll be kind of quarantined to be at home. Um, we'll have to be really careful with cleanliness and everything even more than I've, I've had to before. Uh, I can go outside with a mask on, but I'm not supposed to go to restaurants or crowded places. So probably, I don't know about church. They said that some people go kind of in the back to a sparse place because I'd like to go there and see my friends and stuff so well that'll be all, all taught to us and whatnot um, and then and then like with food I'm not supposed to eat raw vegetables and whatnot because you can get fungus and stuff so we'll, unless you clean them a certain way so there's a lot more stuff I'll, I'll discuss with you guys if you want to know but I just wanted to kind of give a longer video kind of explaining what I'm going to be going through and so 80 days I'll be home and people can come visit me um, you just got to make sure that you're not sick or been around sick people and then just cleanliness, you know, like washing hands, make sure you've, you've taken a shower and stuff like that. But I would love to see you guys. And I also want to say, I, I would love to hear from you too. When I'm in the hospital, it brings a ton of encouragement to me to hear, um, just, um, like, you know, if you hear any Bible passages for me or just what, what God's saying to you about me, what you sense. Um, you know, especially things like, you know, I feel like God's going to keep you alive for many more decades. That's what I feel God's spoken to me because uh, of just what he's spoken to me from Psalm 91 and Psalm 40, 41, I think I just heard. It's like he's God is with his people and on their sickbed. Uh, it's just, there's a lot of good stuff that God's spoken to me. So if you hear any stuff like that from God or you just sense some, something or you just want to encourage me just saying something like, like just what God has done through my situation in your guys' life has been really amazing to me because what what I really wanted is my one of my biggest desires is that the church would interact together more often and that they would be more in, that their engagement with God would be more intentional as far as you know more focused on directly God you know because in this day and age we can get so distracted with direct TV and with YouTube and with internet and every, and just fast food everything um, and so that's one thing that I just wanted to do. It's cool to see it happen on Facebook and 
with people, my friends and stuff. So, um, so I know this is a long video, but it's been great to talk to you. I hope you like it. Oh, and I don't want to unveil my hair as well um, and show you my line here. Okay, so here's my hair unveiled for the first time. There, it did, it just, it just stay there a little bit more. I don't know if more will come out. Um, and then also um, my Hickman line had a leak in it and so they tried to repair it but they couldn't so today I went to the hospital and they had to actually clamp it because they tried to flush it and it started leaking out and so they clamped it with this ghetto <laughs> it's like a little scissors thing that they clamped up here and so this is on me until at least Tuesday so I don't know how I'm gonna shower with this thing on I guess put saran wrap all over the place and so this is kind of like, they made it even longer. So these things, these are my lumens that they hook up whenever they need to inject something into me. Um, so they don't have to ever poke me, but I do have track marks all over me. I haven't been doing heroin, but I have been getting, you know, blood taken sometimes. So that's me. Um, I hope to hear from you guys soon and uh, see you and hear from you and, and, uh, and just uh, live life together, even if it's over the internet. So uh, I'll see you later. God bless you guys. You can just push the button there.